Okay, so the project at hand today is going to be repairing a dump trailer that has a scissors lift. The shaft on the left-hand side of the scissors lift is seized up inside the collar, which caused the base plate that is mounted to the frame to snap off clean. Uh, there is a repair that was attempted, but there is now a bunch of goobered up weld that is stuck on the shaft and binding between the frame and the shaft itself. So thankfully the right-hand side is still in in somewhat good condition um, at this time so at least I can lift the trailer up and out of the way and I don't have to work on the ground and uh, can start looking at how uh, the initial repair is going to be made. Okay so once the square tubes were tacked and welded in place and I knew everything was safe to crawl underneath and take everything apart um, I went ahead and removed all the bolts from the base plates and lowered the scissors lift out of the way. Uh, to access the uh, pipe, collar, and the shafts that were in both sides. <clears throat> the right-hand shaft slid right out uh, quite easily. The left-hand shaft, as you'll watch, uh, was quite a pain to try to get out of the, the collar. Uh, I couldn't pound it out, couldn't twist it out, and uh, had a hard time just pressing it out. And it really was only about a few inches that were binding up on that left-hand side. The right-hand side, like I said, looked pretty good. There was a little bit of rust on the shaft um, over the chrome plating. Basically, all the road grime and stuff that had built up between the pipes was locked in place. Outside of that, um, getting everything apart was probably the biggest problem after I was able to get the shaft out of um, that scissor lift, the, the collar. The, it was a two-inch inside dimension collar. Um, I was able to clean everything up, polish it all up, and then weld the plates back to the um, shafts and then put them all back in, as you'll watch. Uh, throughout the, most of this video, I have most of the commentary in the video itself. I'm just doing a voiceover right now because of the initial videos that were taken. Um, it was very, the sound was very muffled, so...
So, <clears throat> Pat Smith is pounding the right shaft out of that collar. <clears throat> so, a little bit of tool time. I ordered a Porta Power off Amazon. We'll see how good the quality is and how well it holds up. But, figured for the price, it couldn't go wrong, and again, we'll see how well it holds up. Didn't want to go to Harbor Freight and buy the auto body uh, jacks or power jacks or porta powers or whatever you want to call them, but figured I'd try this out being that they're it's a 20 ton unit. So a little more force and hopefully a little better seal on the pump. burnable pile. After initial unboxing seems pretty heavy duty. We'll see how then we'll see how well the seals hold up, but had fairly good reviews, so hopefully that's a positive. Porta power rather, sorry, can be used with multiple heads. I bought the shallow dual acting or two stage head so I can try to get a little more than the single stage head or single acting so the ram will pop out from the center and from the side so there's about an inch and a half to two inches of travel I believe versus the single acting only had about a half inch to three quarters of an inch travel. Store those in my toolbox. And we'll see how well this works. I'll go ahead and get everything set up, get the camera pointed towards the trailer, and we'll give it a go. Going back to keep the plate from kicking out. Okay, so I'm welded down both sides across the back where it's going to push a little bit on the edges just to keep the plates from spreading and I got a strong back to keep this from bowing.
Looks like it came a little bit. It's moving a little bit. All right, to help relieve the uh, two inch pin that's inside that collar <coughs> ends about somewhere in here. But what I'm gonna end up doing is, because as I'm applying hydraulic pressure with that porter power, I can see it moving ever so slightly, but there's still a lot of resistance against it. So it's really gotta be bound up with a lot of rust inside there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the grinder with the cutoff wheel and I'm just gonna slice in. I don't think I'm gonna go all the way through, but I'm going to work probably a few inches up into here and I'll stop and apply more pressure again and see if that will allow the pipe to swell a little bit. I'll clean it all back up and then I'll end up TIG welding it out. Definitely is not free yet, but it is sliding. I think I'm all the way through till about right here. The rest of it's just a relief. Oh, I gotta get some spacers. A piece I can wedge between here. See if I can get something to swell on and I'll pound that off there. Thank you. 
solid pitted, never greasing. Was chromed at one point it looks like and solid rust from no maintenance grease. Oh, I'm not even through. Perfect. I'll go through, clean everything up, blow it out. I'll, I'll run uh, some carbon steel TIG ER70S2 probably. Run a weld up in on that edge. Gauge, make sure the inside's full, but I think these are going off to the machine shop. Okay, time to clean the pins up. I was going to bring them over to a machine shop and have them turn them down a couple thousandths or a few thousandths, but uh, I see that there's chrome plating on here and I think that I can get some of this rust cleaned up and looking at the inside of the collar, I can probably get that pretty clean as well. So I will first start by grinding off all the old garbage well, cleaning up this side mounting plate and taking a look at all that as well. Time for a new flapper wheel. that one. Now let's just clean this one up. That will have to get straightened out a little bit, but I think we'll leave <laughs> the weld that's on this one as it's held in place and clearly held as we were smashing and crashing around. So, other than that, everything feels smooth enough. There was plenty of clearance on the uh, scissors lift collar on this side. So the only thing I got to do now is take this shaft and weld it onto that base plate. And I'm going to use the shielded metal arc welding process for that. So this was slightly off center on layout, not quite five inches, about an eighth inch over. So five and an eighth. Section from center to center. 
going to be eyed up anyhow. Tack it with MIG. You know, I'm going to weld it with stick just because big shaft. It is pretty cold in here. Um, just a touch over 40 degrees, so the part's cold, and uh, I'd rather have good fusion with the shielded metal arc welding process over uh, short circuit MIG. Just works a little bit better. And get rid of my garbage gloves and put my good gloves on. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and tack the uh, two inch shaft onto this uh, pivoting base plate essentially. Uh, they are all bent. There is a lot of forgiveness in them given that the slots so the plate can slide back and forth for alignment um, as long as we're not tweaked too bad this way and obviously real bad this way but we can pound it straight um, after it warps anyways when we weld it. I'm going to tack this up with the gas metal arc welding process or welding process just because it's quick, it's clean. Um, however, short circuit is uh, very prone to lack of fusion. I don't want to repeat what happened before, um, and I don't really want to set everything up to run spray. So, like I said, I'll, sh I'll tack everything up with short circuit MIG, and then I'm going to grab some 7018 electrodes um, and run some stick. We'll get a little better heat input, a little better fusion. So we are pretty centered up on our marks. Let's check one last time. bad with the plate really well. okay. yeah so it's quick a little bit both ways about a sixteenth of an inch so alright so the beauty of the XMTs is I can switch over to shield my arc welding Just like that. So now I'm able to run shielded metal arc welding or stick. Yes, my 7018 electrodes are not preheated to 350 degrees. However, given the scenario with these parts, this is a better option than short circuit mix. Alright, so here we go. 25 amps, eighth inch.
last a little bit. lot of heat to it so you can see how that plate really pulled. Not a big deal. We'll pound it back straight before we slide it back into the collar. The only thing we have left to do, realistically, uh, I will clean up the collar a little bit, which you'll get a, a video of. Uh, I'm going to use a dyno file to reach inside, just kind of get rid of that rust and corrosion um, that was on the shafts. And then we do have to make a TIG weld uh, along the relief cut we put inside the collar to get this puppy out. So. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to use MIG. The reason why I'm not using short circuit, uh, or I'm going to use TIG, not short circuit MIG for that, is because I want to minimize the amount of melt through um, that we have to the inside of that cylinder. If I have a bunch of melt through the inside of the cylinder, then essentially I'm going to have to go back in with a Dynafile and grind out all that reinforcement. I don't want to do that. So I can control that with TIG. That's going to be my option. Seeing that we're here, uh, the second shaft, the weld didn't look super. Had a couple uh, porosity marks and some undercut edges on the base plate. Um, ground everything down, cleaned it up. I do have one little pock mark that's still there of porosity. Um, I don't want to dig any deeper because then I'll have to make a couple extra welds. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a reinforcing pass around the outside of this just to help uh, kind of butter it up a little bit. And just adding a little bit of reinforcement over the top there will help keep that in place and I won't be taking that one apart to make another repair.
Okay, so I have the Grease Zerks drilled and tapped and installed. Now the last thing that we have to do is go ahead and clear all the rust and scale that is built up and caked inside of the collar uh, due to the fact that the shafts uh, were not ever <laughs> greased or greased very seldomly. And the inside of the collar really doesn't look too bad. It's just the fact that the shafts, the chrome printed shafts had built up with some moisture and that moisture uh, formed some scale and it seems to be scraping away fairly easily. Okay, let's see if we can get the shaft in and how much clearance we have. Plenty of clearance. Okay, so we're going to take the shafts. We're going to go ahead and get uh, plenty of greaser on the outside of the shafts. I'm going to verify that the grease zerks are obviously inserting grease into the collar. The collar is nice and clean and clear. It's been scraped and cleaned away. Um, We'll go ahead and slide everything in and we're going to go and uh, go ahead and try to get it all bolted back up. Inserting to the inside, that's good there. Stuff can be pretty stringy. The shop's only about uh, 38 degrees, 37 degrees in here right now. So, like that, I don't have a fire going. And it's a little cooler of the day, so. Anyhow, that one went in real well. That's the one that was hanging up and busted off. So, as long as that one's been freely cleared, it's all good. It should be, should be good. Okay, now all we gotta do is get the scissors. The awkward portion of this is that the scissors actually 
is lifted off the rest and pivoted forward as it bolts up. So I'm probably gonna have to pick this forward and put a four by four or a two by four underneath the bottom there. So let's get that done. Other than sandblasting paint, that's a wrap.